Hello, welcome to Straw Family Farm Take Two. I'm Christy, and today our verse comes from John 8 11. It says, And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. I read this thing today, um, and it kind of just hit the nail on the head for the way things have been going right now. Is while you were busy pointing out all my faults, I was busy overlooking yours. So remember, there's two sides to every story, and I'm not the kind that's going to go and blurt my side out so I can be judged, you know, any way anybody wants, but it is what it is. So be strong. Remember that your side is in your heart, and as long as you go to bed every night with a clear conscience, you're good okay don't let the world get to you because I've been doing it I've been letting it get to me a little bit and it shouldn't be but I'm gonna move on God's forgiven my sins move on so let people judge me for what they think went on but I know what went on and it's all in perspective there's two sides to every story so Anyway, all right, so let's get in. I don't have anything totally hooked, okay? I finished the one scarf, and then I went through, and I did. So I had been throwing all the Christmas stuff in toads, but now I've got it in plastic bags. It's labeled who it's going to go to. Um, I, I did take time to do that, and this podcast is the short one from Thursday. I podcast last week. This week I'm podcasting on Tuesday. So it is a short week, um, but I have progress and a new project. But I have to work on the new project in secret. So the first one that I have two projects that I'm working on. This one is the one I don't have to work on in secret. This is what I work on when everybody sees me, and it's this. Um, I talked to you a little bit last week about it. Um, so I uh, I have two things going on here. Okay, so they weren't coming out even and I thought I need to get back to doing what I do the way I do it. And so I always work on when it's two identical sides or two identical whatever. I do them at the same time so that way if I make any mistakes, the mistakes are identical. And nobody will know <laughs> I know it's silly but um, that way because I'm in the right right mindset so this is how far I've gotten on one side okay and there should be I'm gonna break this down to you here okay I'm gonna move this camera just a little closer just so that I can sit back Oh, and thank you for the tip. I did find out how to set it so it shouldn't do the autofocus thing. It should just be focused and good. So, um, in the pattern, there are these little clusters. Let me see if I can hold it up. See the little clusters there? And basically, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I have nine of the cluster rows and one of the chain rows. There has to be 22, I believe. So this one isn't, it's what, a third of the way done? So that is one side, but that's not all I've gotten done because this is my other one. And it's a, it is a little bit shorter and you can see that I'm in the middle of a row here. And this one I found, um, it's a no-brainer. I, I can do it just whenever I'm doing anything. And this one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm working the eighth cluster row. So I'm, I'm working to catch up this one on that one. So a third of the way done maybe. And then of course they stitch up. So I've made good progress. Um, I did rip out 
because I didn't have very much started. I think I only had like five or six rows. I did rip out and I went with this size because if you remember, it was really, really long. This is still long, but I went with the um, middle parentheses, okay, uh, so that it would be 18 of the clusters across. So before it just looked way too big. Now it still looks large because think you got a front and a back and it, you know, is going to hang a little bit. So, and the heavier it gets, the more it drapes. So it still might be a little bit big, but the way this is made, I think it'll be okay. I think with the drapiness of it, it won't look too huge, if that makes sense. But I did the, all right, let me see if I can do this. So I did, so I wear an extra large. And the problem with this pattern is it says large, extra large, or extra large to extra large. Um, I did the one that is extra large 2x to start with. It just seemed to be way too big. So I backed it up and did the large extra large, which is great because as y'all know, I, I've kind of been watching what I eat and all that. And I am down 10 pounds. Um, I don't really think 10 pounds makes that big of a difference. Um, I don't know. I don't know. So I'm still working on the first ball of each one of these. So I know I'll have enough yarn because I still have three more balls unused. Um, but I think it'll come out okay. I really do. Uh, I think it's just playing. I don't like when it says extra large in two different spots because it's hard to figure out are you the high end of the extra large of this pattern or are you the low end of the extra large of this pattern? So it just takes some figuring out in the first part. I'd rather frog than have something come out that doesn't look good or doesn't fit right or whatever. So I uh, did that and that one I am working on just whenever, okay? Uh, it's one of the things that just whenever is my watch TV in the evening, whatever things. Um, now the next one I'm going to start working on in secret because it's roommate's Christmas gift. Roommate has green eyes and this color is a favorite for roommate. So um, I did do a little bit different on it and I am hoping that I don't have to dye any more of this. Now, this is a wool to shawl, wool to sweater kind of thing. I am using the domestic top, the domestic wool top that I ordered. And if you remember, I spun up a pound of it. I got, um, let me get, I have little notes here. And these notes are my yardage. So I spun up 1126 yards to ply. Okay. So it took me a little bit. I have some more on the wheel still. I have not fixed what Worm did last time. Okay. I haven't fixed any of that. But the last time that we did in the pots, um, this is what I was dying up. And it's got some grays and some olives and it's just really I don't know how to, it's the olive is not so muted um, and the gray isn't really that muted either but you'll get to see how it works up here in a minute so I am trying to make my first custom sweater I took I went in roommates room and I got some shirts that are commonly worn by roommate and I took some measurements is this gonna work I don't know because I can't measure roommate you know or roommate will know something's going on so 
I took some measurements and pretty much, uh, we're not small people, okay, just saying. I took some measurements and I made just this little pattern thing, okay. This is the back. It's just a standard back. I have not figured out the sleeve yet, okay. So that opening for the sleeve is just the de where I'm going to decrease. Um, I don't know how I'm going to do it yet, but I'm working on it. It'll get there. Uh, this is the front. And for the neck, I took a two inch decrease right there. And I only have three inches across here. These measurements are taken off a t-shirt. So I don't know, it's roommate's favorite shirt. Um, I, I don't know how it's gonna work because from t-shirt to sweater, uh, I don't know. We're gonna see. I will attempt if it's really big. It's really big. <laughs> if it's really small, it's really small. I actually have thought this. Tell me if you think this is right or wrong. I'm going to give it to roommate, but leave the tails so that I can rip it out and make it smaller or bigger and just redo it if I have to. It's a lot of work. Make one sweater and have it come out wrong and then, but I don't know. I really don't know a good way to do this if I can't measure everything. So taking it off of a shirt is my next best thing. I'm hoping it's good. <laughs> uh, the other thing I haven't decided is if I want it to be a pullover or button up. Um, if I do it as a button up, I'm just gonna separate it right here, right down, just make this side one piece and this side one piece. And then when I sew it together, I just don't sew those together or I can make it a pullover. So, I don't know. Okay, so I started and I did a horrible thing. I really did. And it took me longer to figure out what I'd done and fix it than the whole thing did. So, all right. I've decided I want the bottom ripped. Okay, so I started this. And these are the measurements that you see. And I'm going to add to this as I go so I'll know what I've done. Um, it's 85 stitches across, which means it's an 87 chain. Chain, you start your second one. Okay, so, and I may be off because I didn't write that down as I did it. So it may be 86 across. Um when I go to do that and I may have to pull it out and start. I won't know for sure until I go to make the second one of these and I haven't yet. But I did something really stupid in the fact that I've worked on this and I got it and I think this is, you know, again, I'm roommates a little bit bigger than me, a little now this 28 when i lay this piece down right here it's not 28 inches long it's 23 but it stretches out way past the 28 so my thinking was as things settle and move and you wear them that it should comfortably settle on a 28 inch waist or how, wherever it's going to fall. I don't know where it's going to fall, to be honest with you. So, um, that's my thinking. If I'm wrong, please, anybody, jump in here. This is the first time I've ever done this, a custom. Uh, most of the time, if I do a custom, they find the pattern. I just do what the pattern says. If it doesn't fit them, that's on them because they told me what size and they told me what pattern, which is normally the way that I custom crochet. So, this is how it's working up, okay? It is the olive with just 
a little bit of gray pops in there. My thinking on this is it will hide dirt. That's the only reason that I put the gray in there is because if you do it all olive and then you stain it, say you drip coffee on it or whatever, with the pops of gray in there, I'm hoping that it just, if there's anything spilt or whatever, it just looks like pops of gray. <laughs> like it's supposed to be there. <laughs> and as y'all know, I normally wear a lot of my food, you know. It's not for me, but hey, most people, I can't say is everybody wears a white shirt and comes out clean. So, and we are country folk. We, we really don't come out that clean a lot of times. <laughs> just saying so it fits our lifestyle so the stitch that I'm doing here to make it this ribbed which has a lot of give okay and that's why I'm doing it this way is I'm doing a front pole and a back pole let me see if I can double crochet so I double crochet I did the chain across and then I did all double crochets back across and then on the second row I front pulled the first, back pulled the second, front pulled, and that's how I'm making that little rib pattern, okay? I know it's kind of hard to see. Let me see if I can hold this back. There we go. This, it should look a little ribbed. So that's going to be the bottom, and then I'm just going to double crochet the rest of it. Um, I just don't want to make it too complicated I don't I'm not doing any pattern in it like I could do cables or whatever I just I want to get the sweater and with this being the first one that I've ever done custom to someone I want to make it simple so that I can keep track I have to make two of these or two splits for the front I don't know yet um, very simple I am worried about making my decreases in the sleeves look right and I am worried about my decreases around here looking right the sleeves I'm just going to do them rectangles and sew them up the bottom so and I can make those to fit this if I get the decrease right so super simple just worried about the decrease don't know how many to decrease what I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out when I get to the double crochets, I'm going to figure out how many rows I have in an inch, and then I'm going to decrease, you know, one by every inch. So I'll decrease one every so many rows at an inch. That's the plan. Will it work that way? <laughs> you and I are about to find out <laughs> if it can really be that simple. So what was my big mistake hmm okay i worked on this while roommate was gone i ball wound the yarn and got it in a bag that doesn't have a see-through on it this is um one of the very first bags that i made and it actually has in it let me see if i can just let me take these out okay so i've got like 1100 this is my ball for this one and unfortunately, I don't think I'm going to do the front and the back at the same time on this one. So that's why I'm writing everything down. There's my other ball. Here's my little note papers for yardage. And then I had a little, you know, because when you hand spin, it doesn't always come off all on one ball. So I had a little ball left over. Okay, so in this bag, this is one of the very first bags I made. Um, I called it my commuter bag because whenever I was going anywhere, it has this little pocket in it that snaps shut. And that is where your ball of yarn can go. Whoops. You know, you got your project in here and it may work when I get some of the yarn out of the way, but your ball of yarn can go in here. And then this allows the yarn to come out and you just go and your ball doesn't roll all over. So, um, and it is a lined bag and it's a, uh, cowboy rodeo bag and it was one of the very first bags that I made if I had it to do all over I would make this a double pull 
um, instead of a single because that makes this oops, that makes this too long so I would definitely make it a double pull instead of having this big thing but I tend to take this and wrap it around it now so then you end up with something like this but anyway so I put it in a bag that um, it couldn't be seen all right so I was sneaking working on this um, roommates on overtime and stuff and I thought hmm I got the house to myself remember that conversation well I lost track of time in trying to figure this out I was deep in thought and I hear the garage door open up <laughs> and because this is um, roommates mother's house roommate parks in the garage um, it's a two-car garage but we've got stuff on the other side so until it's cleaned out there's only room for one car and roommate parks there because it's roommates house pretty much I just live here as, as the roommate I'm actually the roommate anyway so um, I hear the garage I shoved all of this in the bag which I had the bag there and I had this someplace along the way the needle that I had decided on vanished and I don't remember what color it was I mean if I knew what color it was I could at least pick out which one I thought it was I I if it was a green one I would have had three green ones I would have known by the size so um yeah I didn't and then it took me a lot of time to go back and find a hook and you can't tell where I've done it so you can't tell there are a few stitches and I'm not going to tell you where because if it's hidden in there so well that you can't tell and I can't tell where where I change look at look at this top row right here okay if you can't tell and I can't tell where um, the stitch size change and trust me I've gone like this through every one of them I think I got the right size hook back and I had to try several different sizes so I started with my favorite and then went huh that's making it too big then I went down a size and I think I ended up going down I went down two sizes thinking oh that's probably the size and then I ended up going up back up so I was one off from my favorite and you can't tell where I switched it so I like the fact that I found number one a green one so that I know because I'm working on a green project um, but my tip to you don't take your hook away from the project make sure that your hook that you've decided on is in the back <laughs> just saying because it took me longer to find the hook again to find to match this then it did the whole time that it took me to double crochet this whole thing <laughs> so I have more time in on a hook hunt for the second time because I tried several hook sizes before I settled on one and then I got this going and then I lost the hook and I really don't even know where it ended up so yeah um, or if you're gonna do this and, and this is a good idea I think I'm just gonna fly by the seat of my pants I'm gonna put H size hook and yes I'm writing and making that do because at least now I know okay I am using an H size hook um, and it's just one of the boil hooks I'm probably showing it upside down yeah don't know that the camera it's not going to autofocus remember I turned off the autofocus so maybe I just need to back up there we go H and it's just one of the boil hooks so yeah don't lose your hook when you're trying to do a custom piece just saying um, before I've when I've done custom pieces I've always had the pattern that told me which size hook to do so 
I can fly by the seat of my pants, grab a hook, and do it. Um, and I make ponchos that way. I vary hooks. I vary. We, and I've put on here before that each pattern can change. Um, I showed you several different changes with yarn weight, hook size, and that on that virus shawl. I have done them longer and turned them into ponchos with heavier uh, yarn. And then I've done fingering weight, beautiful little shawls and you know i've made it look dainty i've made it look outside you know where i've made it look so many different things with just that one pattern by changing either the hook or the yarn or both well that came back to bite me in the butt because this i don't want to change hook size and i was about made to so yeah and i did think that I may go down a hook size after I get done with the ribbing. Now, my biggest challenge is deciding how much ribbing do I want. And I'm going to say this as lovingly as I can. The internet is no help to me here. I have Googled how to custom do, and I have found tons of charts, tons of this that and the other on um, what size your measurement you know if you have this size waist you wear this size but i don't have how to measure for a sweater to make it fit properly um i don't have um a lot of help when it comes to and maybe i just need to rj and i have done away with the web page pretty much because no one was going to see it we weren't using it we weren't updating it and it was a lot of work so we kind of let that go and we did that about a year ago or so but it didn't fall off the internet until which is not really gone we can go and publish it again if we want and anyway i i'm not but i might start a little blog just to put stuff like this up here all the things that i did wrong all the things that i do because it after the ribbing it should go smaller and tighter so i'm thinking if i go down a hook size just one hook size and i've done that for borders around those squares and those blankets around the you know so i know the usefulness of it question is should I I don't know and that's what I'm gonna find out um, there's no you can't just google the size of ribbings you know it's like how many inches of a sweater is ribbing well there's different styles different ones you can do it as many different ways so that doesn't help it doesn't give me a range of ribbings are normally at least one inch to three that would help me haven't found anything like that. Um, I know that you could do a whole sweater in ribbing, but it looks stupid to my, in my opinion. Okay, not saying I'm not saying the rib stitch. I'm saying a ribbed sweater. Just I don't know. It wouldn't look right to me. You know. So you want ribbing on the cuffs. You want ribbing around the base. Every place you want it to stay tight, and you want ribbing around the collar. I get that. I've crocheted enough. I get that. But how wide is that ribbing? Yes, you want it to be consistent. You want the same amount on the bottom to be around here. And then normally less around the collar. But I don't know. There's no formula out on the internet for a sweater that when you're customizing something. And I guess that's where you have to just fling it and if it turns out great then hmm maybe I should write that pattern up but then by then I wouldn't know what I'd done <laughs> so this is my this is my problem it's always a formula and I don't know how that formula is really supposed to go and I don't know how to take that formula and put it into a pattern so you guys can come along with me if you have tips and tricks and 
you've done this for years and tell me, hey, you're making a big mistake, please leave it in the comments below. Um, I am flying by the seat of my pants, hoping that this will come out. This is September. I have September, October, November, December to get it done. Four months. I should be able to do that. I can do crochet, you know. Um, but I need to be able to show real progress on this. And if I'm having to frog a lot of it, and this is my main worry, is if I screw up so much of it that I have to frog so much of it and keep starting over, am I going to be able to get it done? Is it going to take me a year to do this? It shouldn't. And I get that. It shouldn't take me a year to get this done. Um, my biggest concern should be, do I have enough yarn? I'm praying. <laughs> and I've actually already thought of that because um, this from top to bottom is the size of a t-shirt, which makes it about 30 inches. Okay. So 30 inches, this one right here, remember I told you stretches out to 30. If you look, this is a long sweater. So this reaches 23. I actually could save time by shortening the body and just not making it one that comes down to the tushy, just may make one that goes to the waist. So when I get this one going, I'm gonna start the front side and I really want it to be a pullover, but if I have to start three pieces and do it all the same, I will do that too. But as I see that I might be running out of yarn, I may have to, number one, dye new yarn in this colorway for um, the sleeves, or I'll just shorten the body. Because, like I said, this is 23 inches, okay? And it stretches out to 28 easy. It goes all the way up to 30-something easy. So, and it's pretty long. So, I probably won't do... A t-shirt comes down longer. You know what I mean? So, a sweater and a t-shirt are not the same. I get that, but it's all I've got to work with. So, your t-shirt comes down way down here. I can take off all of that by making a sweater that comes up to your waist. So I hope that that made sense. And that's where I'm going to shorten or I don't think I'm going to elongate, but shorten so that I have enough for the sleeves. I hope I really could not find anything on yardage either for how much yarn does it take to make this? How much yarn? I am going to gauge it all off that back. Um, if I can make, and this is just calculation in my head, if I can make three back pieces out of that, I should have enough to do the entire sweater. We will see how that goes because I can stitch it together with yarn that I just dyed solid olive or yarn that I dyed it's not going to be seen. It's on the inside. I'm not going to do it in white. Don't get me wrong. But what I'm saying is I can spin some and dye it close enough that I can get by. Um, I know that the arms are not going to be, you know, the sleeves are not going to be as big as this panel, you know, so because I'm just doing them rectangle. So, and then I'm going to put the cuff on them. So, I'm nervous. I don't know if I have enough. I've got 1,100 yards. I don't know how much ribbing to do. I don't know what standards are. Um, I took my pattern off of a t-shirt, which is probably my biggest mistake, but I don't know. Just don't know. So we're going to see how this goes. Worst case scenario. And this is, I actually have thought of this. It might turn out to be a sweater vest. You know, just one with no sleeves. Because then, of course, I wouldn't need as much yarn. So, 
We'll see. <laughs> it, you talk about flying by the seat of your pants. That's what I'm doing. It might be a pullover sweater vest. It might be a whole sweater. It might be a button up. I have no idea what I'm doing, but I'm going to do it. And it's a labor of love. So um, just remember that I am using wool that I don't consider next to skin soft, but it's not real scratchy either. I mean, it does great on my hand and on my arms. Even on my arms, not scratchy. Mine is right here. This part right here is the most sensitive to me. And that might be a little itchy. I don't know. So it is what it is. Um, this is what I'm going to work on. This is what you guys are probably going to see as I sneak this to get done. Um, if you have any tips, if you've ever made a sweater um, on your own, just no pattern, no anything. Uh, if you design patterns, whatever, you got any tips out there, you just let me know because... I don't know what I'm doing. Not even going to pretend. Okay. I have always, I've always done it off a of pattern. Now I'm going to say that. And a lot of you that know me know that I don't really know how to read patterns. I'm learning a little bit, but I used to do them just off the pictures. You'd show me a picture of something. And I literally would say, that's this stitch. That's that. And then I used even have a pattern here oh yes I do okay so what I used to do is I could make up my own variety I could comp uh, these were the kind of pictures that I liked right there okay I could copy that didn't know how it would look close enough that the person paying me would be fine with it um, and in most patterns um they have this right here finished bust and it tells me how many um inches this how many centimeters uh length from the shoulder and it tells me so i literally would copy the stitch like this and then make it the right size and seam it up and I could make it look just like this did I uh, just like this did I copy the pattern did I use a pattern I did use a pattern it was their pattern I just did it my way um, and you still ended up with the same final product so as I've been going over the last couple of years I've been trying to pay attention to this stitch guide right here and I know what chains are, single crochet, half double crochet, double crochet, trebles, beginning. And I know what all the little abbreviations are now. Um, slip stitch, uh, let's see, repeat. Um, I know how to decipher special stitches. Um, some of this stuff still gets to me. Some of it I, I really don't know. Um, oh. But I always use the right size hook I always use the right size yarn I just did it off the picture and the measurements this stuff in here was all foreign to me and that's one thing that this the the one that helped me the most was the huge sampler blanket that I made two years ago now yeah well, I started it two years ago. Probably finished it a year ago. But um, that one really helped me because I could look at it and go, oh, I can do this. And then I figured out what it was talking about. And I was like, oh, so that's what that means. That one helped me the most. Um, and these little kits are still doing that for me. Reading patterns isn't my forte. Making patterns... I don't have a picture. That's the thing is somebody else hasn't already done this. I haven't been told use this size stitch, this size yarn, or this size needle, this size yarn, do this stitch. Um, just by picture of the stitch. 
that's gonna it might bite me in the butt here doing this one I, I don't know but I am gonna get to work on it and I am going to include you guys in the progress and hopefully oh, by Christmas I won't have to go out and just buy a sweater <laughs> remember this is a hand spun so there's a lot of love in it just don't know if it's gonna fit so all right let's see here that is really on the wheel I have more of this domestic wool it's the same one worm got into it I have a, a little bag for it now and I haven't gone back and straightened it out it, roving is not that hard to straighten out just saying okay and top is the same stuff you know just line up the fibers go on keep spinning it not a big deal um rj's world uh i think he's just been he was going down last night to get a couple of calves um he's been rodeoing i only had one weekend in between these two in just a few days so he really has just been riding horses rodeoing he did start his um job on last thursday that we talked about and he said it went really good um so yeah just stuff like that and then in the farmhouse i have started now this is my project for christmas my crochet but you know i did these walls um i've done the ceilings and the wall this room is pretty much done light switch covers have been changed the um, plug-ins have all been changed they're all clean they're all whatever i i've stripped this wood um i've stripped it down um uh, everything in here is done except for the floor is not waterproof i i need to get on that and do something i think i'm thinking i might just thompson water seal it i don't want anything that's going to change the color um see if i can do this so these are original old hardwood floors okay my favorite spot in them is right back there in that corner because they do and, and the camera isn't doing them justice but um they just don't have the wear and tear on the finish oops sorry just don't have the wear and tear on the finish so it looks really pretty um through this part there's actually some dark spots where things have gotten spilled and not been cleaned up or you know and i took and cleaned them really well and bleached out some of the dark spots and blended it let's just say that because it's not really bleached out um i use some different wood finishing things wood cleaners and and that and so some of them just kind of hide away and but i need to get it sealed so that no moisture is getting in here um worm still has little accidents somebody comes to the front door he gets excited and he little winkles um and i don't like that i mean i wipe it all up but i don't like the fact that it could soak into the floor so and i'm sitting there drinking coffee and i you know i spill stuff um roommate comes through uh we don't use this room as much now because we've got the den cleaned out but this is one of my favorite rooms in the house and i love to sit here and crochet when roommate's gone now i don't do it when roommate's here because we sit together and we yak and we talk and we tell about our day and this that and the other and um you know we're in the den watching tv uh, just different stuff so yeah but it still has a chance of stuff getting spilt on it and i'm really thinking and you guys can tell me if i'm way off base oh my god don't do that or not thompson's water seal i'm really just thinking to thompson water seal this thing with no color or anything and do it just in a section pull everything over the side water seal that let it dry put everything else over there do this side let it dry and then go on um i think it would help it i don't know i'd have to scrub it real good um i want it to be clean when it's sealed and then go from there roommates like that's a lot of work i don't know that we want to do that <laughs> i don't know that i want to do it either 
but I know I don't want spills on the floor. <laughs> so I have been cleaning on the kitchen cabinets and I'm going to take you in there. Let me see if I can get it. Now remember this house was a smoker's house before. So when I take you in here, you will see the difference. Okay. Um, okay. I hate doing this stuff backwards. All right. So here we are in the kitchen. I'm going to try and set you down so that you are steady and then redirect you. All right. So this cabinet has been cleaned. This one, this one, and this one have been sorta, sorta. But what I wanna show you is, let's see, and I don't know if the lighting's gonna do it in here. Um, let's see if I just, I know it's gonna be cattywampus. So, these right here, and it's not showing it that much. This one and this one have not been cleaned, and they are so much darker. And you, Well, you can see up at the top. See how yucky? Um, I've been getting a lot of orange nicotine off of them. These are orange. The further up you go, the darker they are. These look different just because of the glare. And I'll give you a hint. That's where we turn the light. And it is definitely different in color. Um, the other thing that you can see just because this isn't really showing how dingy this is and it's hard to get a good there's a good one let me see here see how orange everything looks now I've done this wood and it's been sealed up and it is probably six shades lighter I don't know if you remember that let me hit the light here I don't know if you remember when I did those that window's going to play with us a little bit um, so I did these and it looks more like wood um, but let me show you one thing that I've done that shows exactly how bad the smoke in this house has been so the ceiling is supposed to be white I took that vent down I washed it and repainted it and as you can see the one in here matches the ceiling it all matches all nice and white with the gray walls there you go now do you see the difference it's like I know I'm crooked but yeah so I still have this ceiling in here to do and I've got these cabinets to do and these cabinets are very very orange you can see the orange tint to them um, yeah and you can definitely see the marks where let me set this down here from back here you can see where I've cleaned and where I haven't because I'm short okay um, but right here you can see that top part has not been cleaned this has and I also went back and um, oiled them really good after taking all the nicotine off but you can see how orange like over the stove it is and this cabinet is really orange over the stove that's the sink my di dirty dishes in it um, but everything's orange along the top but yeah you can tell that I've worked on these two cat whoops these two cabinets right here the most um, they're ready well except for the top they're the way we're gonna leave them these two over here I've been working on and these two I haven't even touched and you really can see how dark this one right here is um, with that and I wish the camera would kind of show it I'm trying to there we go okay um, you can see the glare of this thing I'm trying to keep my hand up there but see they're very orange especially at the top so I've been doing that just slow going slow 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 going but at least oops, sorry about that at least I'm getting there 
Um, so this is my next project. I want to get the cabinets done, the ceiling painted, and then um, roommate has some different lights that are going to go in here. This hangs down and I'm short, but it's like right there next to my head. This would bonk me. Um, so the other one is a track lighting, old 70s type track lighting. Oh, there you know, you can see the difference in the ceiling too. <laughs> um, roommate has picked out some round LED lights and they sit, they're only like that thick and they sit flush up. This fan, I know you guys are going to say, why are you getting rid of the fan? Well, because the pull things don't work and the fan doesn't work with the light on you can't no it you can't turn the light off like in here um i have this light on just because it balances out the light from that window when i'm recording normal every day we just have the fan on to circulate air and it keeps it cooler and the ac doesn't have to work so hard so normally this light is off that one you have to have and it's the same way in the office the lights don't work i mean the fans the pull tab thingies aren't done right. So if the light is on, you can have the fan on. Now you're not supposed to, you're supposed to be able to pull, turn off the light, you can't. This one, it's set the way it is. And if you pull the, string, the thing, you get what you get. You can at some point have the fan on, but the light has to be on. Um, if you pull the one string once, the light goes out. Then you pull the second one, the pull it a second time and the fan comes on it has to pull things but they're just not they're not right that's all i'm gonna say is they're not right <laughs> so anyway that's what i've been working on uh we did haul in some dirt and i've got some dirt work going on i cleaned out the barn last week to get the tractor in there um there's a low spot from the neighbor he built a barn and didn't take into account runoff. And then this summer, roommate caught his hired hand digging a ditch across our pasture because they said it didn't drain right. And we and roommate hit the roof. He, roommate was like, you don't have any right to change my land. So roommate got a friend to bring in and I need to take the tractor and box blade and box blade it down. But we're gonna even level it out right there. And then if they have a drainage problem, it's up to them to drain it, not across ours and making our pond. And roommate says that the pond used to never be murky um, and algae covered like it is now since they put in that barn and they're making their horse poopy water drain into ours because ours is still we don't have the cattle out there we, we had some growers out there they're gone they're already sold their the one is at the butcher shop you know um yeah so now we need to do something to um get that pond back to a nice clean pond um the first thing that we started doing my necklace is driving me crazy the first thing that we started doing was we've cleaned up um, and mowed around the pond area and you can actually get out there now there's still a lot of brush that we got to get out there and clean up and stuff but it's getting there um, it used to be like just a few trees around it now it looks like a jungle out there and then that fence line that we're cleaning out um, so we're, we're working on all those things but it's not anything you can really see any progress it, it looks exactly the same so all right this has turned into a little bit longer than i thought it would sweater's going to be done i will update you each week as to what i do and if you want to make a pattern out of what i tell you that's great and if you want to use it that's great um if you hate it and go my god she did that that's great too just remember god has done forgive me um there's two sides to every story my side is is that i'm making this if it works out awesome if not 
and I fail, I fail, you know? There's two sides to every story. My side is, at least I'm trying it. If it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. If it does, it does. So, all right. I will let y'all off here, and I will talk at you later. You have a great week. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'm trying to remember to say that. RJ tells me all the time, you need to say that, Mom. He says, you know, you need to put it out there. We've never really pushed it. And he says, but you need to say that. So, all right, I'm off. I will see y'all later. Bye.